Hello my YouTube friends and welcome back to the channel. I want to introduce you to an old friend of mine. This is the Bowers & Wilkins DM602 Series 3. And this is the speaker that really started it all for me in the world of hi-fi audio. And how I got to know about Bowers & Wilkins is actually from my days in college. Back in the early 2000s, I was working my way through college and at the time I had a pair of JBL Studio S312s. Those are the big tower speakers with a 12 inch woofer in them. And I remember this day vividly because I was walking back from class and I walked by one of my neighbor's rooms and the sound that was coming from there sounded really good. So I knocked on his door and I was like, hey, you know, what kind of speakers do you have? And he told me, he said, they're Bowers and Wilkins. And at the time, I've never heard of them. And so for the next couple hours, him and I shared some beers and some good music. And that's when I realized I'm going to sell my JBL speakers and purchase a pair of Bowers and Wilkins. And I did. The moment I sold my JBL speakers, I purchased these DM602 Series 3 speakers. And the rest is history. Now, these speakers are on loan from my father because I sold them to him about 15 years ago. And he's still enjoying them. So I thought today it would be cool to do a teardown video of one of these classic Bowers and Wilkins speakers because back then, in my opinion, that was a time when Bowers and Wilkins was firing on all cylinders. So today we're going to tear this speaker down. We're going to go over the TS parameters of the drivers. We're going to get the cabinet construction. We're going to take a look at the crossover and then we're going to do a sound comparison of the 602s versus something modern like the Kef Q350s. So let's get started. In 2004, a pair of DM602 Series 3s would set you back $600 per pair, and I thought they offered great value for money at the time compared to other speakers I had listened to. I especially liked the tweeter for its smoothness and detail. The 7-inch woofer did a great job of filling my small dorm room with enough bass that satisfied my needs. These speakers were offered in two colors, black and Sorrento. I purchased the black pair because, in my opinion, I thought it matched better with my equipment. Here are some pictures I found with the DM602s in my dorm room. At the time, I was rocking a Harman Kardon AVR520 receiver, which I still have, and a Harman Kardon PA2000 amplifier. I don't want to bore you with any more reminiscing, so let's get started with the teardown. The woofer in the DM602 S3 is 7 inches in size and is held in by 8 4mm Allen screws. I remember vividly when I was at the Bowers & Wilkins dealer in the early 2000s and first laid my eyes on these speakers and thinking, wow, what a cool and tough looking bookshelf speaker. I was immediately drawn to this speaker because of its bigger 7 inch woofer and cabinet. This was a different approach than what other brands were doing at the time. The industry was shifting towards using smaller drivers and cabinets, which really didn't interest me. You know, bigger has to be better, right? Well, that was my way of thinking back then as a typical punk kid working his way through college. During this time, B&W had really made a name for itself because of their attention to detail and quality. Back in those days, not many speaker companies were using drivers of this quality in their affordable line of speakers. The woofer from the DM602 S3 features a cast basket, Kevlar cone, and a rubber surround. A cast basket has quite a few benefits. It's more rigid, allows for the speaker to run cooler, and ringing is significantly reduced. As for technologies, B&W is using a vented bobbin and is venting the voice coil underneath the spider. The vented bobbin aids in venting the trapped air behind the dust cap during long strokes. By venting the voice coil underneath the spider, it will help keep it cool during those long and loud listening sessions. The voice coil on the woofer appears to be 1.5 inches in size, and the ferrite magnet measured around 3.5 inches in width by 5 eighths of an inch in height. Now let's see how much this driver weighs. All right, it's time to find out how much this driver weighs. It feels pretty hefty to me. And it came in at four pounds and eight ounces. For comparison, the woofer from my Bowers & Wilkins 705 S2 weighed three pounds and 13.5 ounces. And the woofer from my JBL Stage 250B weighed three pounds and 7.7 .7 ounces. During the impedance sweep, I noticed some driver resonance taking place between 110 Hz and 170 Hz. 
There's also another resonance at 700 Hz that has enough amplitude that I think it might be audible. These speakers are 20 years old, so I don't know if some of the glue that holds the surround has loosened up and is causing some of these resonances that are taking place. The woofer has a resonant frequency of 47.4 Hz and total Q came in at 0.49 indicating a decently damp driver. Voice coil inductance came in at 0.46 millihenries and BL which measures the motor strength of a driver came in at 6.6 .6 tesla meters. So now I'm going to attempt to remove the tweeter. I have replaced this tweeter once before about 15 to 17 years ago. You know, it's been a while, and uh, from what I remember, I believe it was kind of like a twist locking system. So you install the tweeter, and then you twist it to lock it into place, and I think that's how you remove it. It's been a while, but uh, I still remember something like that. So let's, let's give it a shot. Trying to be really careful because you know all this stuff is you know it's really old these speakers are they're 20 years old and with time you know the plastics get brittle so i'm just trying to be extra extra careful with stuff and there we go one bowers and wilkins 602 s3 tweeter and there it is the pinnacle of bowers and wilkins 600 series tweeter technology from the early 2000s the tube that is coming out of the rear of the tweeter is there to absorb the unwanted sounds that are radiating from the back of the driver. This technology was derived from the Nautilus speaker and was also featured in their flagship Nautilus 800 series loudspeakers of the time. As far as I know, Bowers & Wilkins still uses this technology in many of their speakers they sell today. KEF recently came out with a similar technology called Metamaterial Absorption Technology, also known as MAT. The tweeter has a pretty large ferrite magnet and the dome material is made from aluminum. For some reason, aluminum dome tweeters at the time had a reputation of sounding harsh and fatiguing. But I didn't experience any of that with my speakers. In my opinion, for their price point, the DM602 were one of the smoothest sounding and detailed speakers I had heard in the early 2000s. Even today, they still sound great and put a smile on my face. Well, that's an interesting impedance curve with two humps in it. I wonder if this has something to do with the tube loaded tweeter. I really don't know what to make of this curve, but maybe someone who will see this video does and will comment. Besides the two humps, the impedance curve is pretty smooth. The resonant frequency of the tweeter came in at 998 Hz and inductance came in at 0.16 millihenries. The crossover in the DM602S3 is pretty nice. I found a schematic for the crossover and B&W is using a third order filter with two metallized polyester film capacitors and an air core inductor on the tweeter circuit. On the woofer circuit, B&W is using a first order filter consisting of one air core inductor. The binding posts are gold plated and contain no ferromagnetic materials, but the nuts that fasten them to the terminal cup are made from steel. The cabinet in the DM602 is pretty decent, even by today's standards. The black vinyl wrap has held up really well over these last 20 years and shows little wear. As for construction quality, the front baffle is made from two materials and is almost one and a half inches thick. The rear cabinet wall is five eighths of an inch thick, and I would assume the side walls are too. On the inside of the cabinet, B&W has applied their matrix bracing technology which ties all of the side walls together to help combat any cabinet resonances that are taking place. B&W then stuffed the cabinet with plenty of damping material, and the base reflex port is flared on both ends. Back in those days, this kind of cabinet quality and attention to detail was very hard to find in speakers in this price range. Port tuning came in at 37.6 Hz. The reason why the second peak is higher than the first peak is because the resonant frequency of the enclosure is lower than the resonant frequency of the driver. 
Before I wrap up this video, I thought I would include a sound demo of the DM602S3s versus the brand new Kef Q3 Metas. Now these speakers are 20 years older and I've been demoing these speakers back and forth for probably the last, you know, month and a half now. And, you know, I've been really shocked by how well the DM602S3 still holds its own against brand new speakers that are made today. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description to the sound demo. I can't include it in this video because I'm using uh, non-copyright free music. So click the link, have a listen, leave a comment, and let me know which one you guys like better. Because I think you might be surprised that these 20 year old DM602 S3s are still very good speakers, even by today's standards. It has been over 10 years since I have heard a pair of DM602 speakers. And I was really impressed by what I heard, especially considering these speakers are now 20 years old. In my opinion, these speakers can still hold their own against some of the newer offerings that are available today. Tearing these speakers down to see what makes them tick really showed me that B&W's attention to detail and quality was important to them, even on their entry line of speakers. In my opinion, back then, B&W offered a lot of value for money compared to other speaker brands at the time, and the DM602 is proof of that. If you'd like to see more teardown videos of classic B&W speakers, make sure to hit that like button. My father also owns a pair of classic CDM 7NTs, which would be equivalent to the 704S3 that is offered today. And that's my look inside video on the classic pair of Bowers & Wilkins DM602S3 speakers. So long, and happy listening!